My name is Timothy, and I just finished with my freshman year at Barry Goldwater High School. While my eight-year-old sister, Rachel, was done with second grade, we were both watching Ed, Ed and Eddie on Cartoon Network. The program went to the commercial break, somewhere after the Geico commercial called Warm-Blooded Employees played. The commercial came on saying, Excited about Walt Disney's Sleeping Beauty Special Edition, releasing on September 9th, 2003? Well, Walt Disney's Sleeping Beauty is re-releasing as an extended edition in theaters for seven weeks. It's got new scenes and an alternate ending. Screenings available at AMC and Harkins. It was such commercial whiplash that I didn't really know how to transition from one to the next, but since I realized that Rachel adored Disney princesses, I asked my dad if he could drop Rachel and I off to AMC Deer Valley 30. AMC Deer Valley 17, if you want to get technical, but it was for both of us to see Sleeping Beauty. And he agreed. The next morning, our mom went to work, and Dad took us to McDonald's for breakfast. We then arrived at the theater. Our dad said to the box office manager, One adult and one child for Sleeping Beauty at 11.15 a.m. Then he said to us, If you two get bored, you can just see another movie. I said, okay. The ticket stub said that Sleeping Beauty was in Theater 24, which was actually Theater 11. Uh, Anyway, I digress. Meanwhile, there was an usher who looked traumatized and shocked with fear, and asked us, Are you two seeing the extended edition of Sleeping Beauty? I said, yes, we are. Then he said to us, What you are about to see will haunt you for life. We went in, not believing him. Then we realized that the theater was empty, which was strange for a screening of a decent Disney film. The AMC bumper with the film strip man with a crystal ball kicked on, along with the previews such as Brother Bear, Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas, Elf, School of Rock, Big Fish, and Freaky Friday. Then the Walt Disney Pictures logo came on but it was silent. The opening credits came on, but the song Once Upon a Dream was muffled. I couldn't hear a thing. Then it cuts to the film, but the shot just stays on the castle. Then it cuts to the scene where Maleficent announces that on Aurora's 16th birthday, she shall prick her finger on the spindle of the spinning wheel and die. King Stefan orders his guards to kill her, and I was like, That's not what he said in the original version. Cuts to Aurora singing, I wonder, in the forest. Uh, Wow, they really missed some scenes. The forest was dark and deserted. There, There were no signs of animals like the rabbits, squirrels, or birds, but again, it was silent. It then shows an image of a desert with a skeleton laying on the ground. And I was confused. So was Rachel. Then it cuts back to the film, and we see Aurora crying on her bed, but it didn't sound like cartoon crying. It sounded like as if Mary Costa, the voice of Aurora, was was actually crying. Then cuts to Aurora back at the castle, still sad, and suddenly a breeze through the forest was heard, and, and it sounded like the forest that's near Flagstaff or Williams in Arizona. It then cuts to a black and white picture of a playground in Anthem, Arizona, which had a creepy girl who looks similar to Aurora staring into the camera. It then cuts to Aurora with pink wet eyes from crying. She said, what's the point of living? But the scary thing is that she didn't sound like Mary Costa at all this time. In fact, she sounded more like Catherine O'Hara. She continued on. I am betrothed to marry Prince Philip, but there was this man in the forest who loved me. A single tear dropped down from her face. She continued, I need to end it all. There she walked towards the spinning wheel, and a voice comes on. Do it. As Aurora touched the spinning wheel, she dies instantly. Then Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether come in 
And Maleficent says to them, You poor, selfish fools, thinking you could defeat me. Well, you're wrong. You lost. To me, the mistress of all evil. Well, here's your precious princess. The three fairies looked in horror at Aurora's corpse as it lies on the floor, blood oozing out of her finger. Maleficent says, As for you there, you shall die too. But she did not sound like Eleanor Audley. She sounded like Angelica Houston. Maleficent then zaps Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether, causing them to turn into fairy dust. Then Maleficent goes to the woods and walks up to Prince Philip and says, Looking for the girl you met? Yes, he replies. Then she asks if he was a god. And he says, No, I was never a god. She then kills him with her staff. Then it cuts to a time card, stating one month later. The strange thing was, was that it was spoken by that French narrator from Spongebob Squarepants. It made no sense at all, as Disney and Nickelodeon are two different companies. They, they don't go together. A funeral was being held for Aurora, Philip, Flora, Fauna, and Meriwether. The film ends with the credits written in blood, and a slow and sad version of Hail to the Princess Aurora plays. My sister was crying, and I was trying to calm her down and tell her that, that this was all fake. We told customer service about the movie, and here's what they did. They ejected the film reel, took it outside behind the movie theater, and destroyed it with a hammer. I guess we were the breaking point. After that, they apologized to us for any inconvenience. I then decided for us to see a different movie, called uh, Hulk, in Theater 16, Theater 3, whatever, okay? We began to feel better when seeing this movie. Now, if you happen to find an advertisement for Sleeping Beauty Extended Edition, I think I just recommend that you buy the original DVD release.